Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Yahweh Kakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahushai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ. But his one true name is Yahushai. I would like to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashi Mashai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole for the elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am your brother Mashiach Razaka from the servants of Yahweh Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much this lesson is going to be titled as John 3.16. All right, a lot of. Um, you know, these wacky tacky Christians, they abuse John 3.16 and they'll use this scripture as a personal interpretation that this scripture is talking about everybody, anybody can be saved, all people can be saved. But that's not what John 3.16 is talking about. John 3.16 is pertaining to the Israelites and we're going to prove that in this lesson. And Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. This is John 3.16. I'm going to read it for verbatim. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So wacky tacky Christians and these other 501c3 charter religions will read John 3.16 and they'll say, See, this is talking about everybody. Everybody can be saved. But that's not what this scripture is saying. All right. This scripture was pertaining to the Israelite. The heavenly father gave his only begotten son for the nation of Israel. Yahweh Shai had to be that sacrificial lamb so the Israelites could be grafted back to the father because we broke the old covenant. And we're going to prove that. Now, before I can go into the next precept, we got to go into the meaning of words like the elders and apostles of Great Millstone teaches us. All right. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai. So when you go into John 3.16 and you go into the meaning of that word world there which is g2889 it goes into the meaning of cosmos all right and we're going to go into the meaning of that so that word world in john 316 let's see strong's g2889 cosmos cosmos right it says an 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 apt or harmonious arrangement or constitution order government and that's talking about the israelites all right that's pertaining to the israelites it says in the second meaning it says ornate orna ornament decoration adorn adorn adornment the arrangement of stars the heavenly hosts as the ornament of heavens all right and it goes down you see world there all right you see, I'm not going to read all this, but the main thing you see, it says, it says the Gentiles as con con contrast to the Jews. Now, that word Gentile there is not talking about natural heathens. That's talking about Israelite foreigners because you had Israelites that were Hellenized. When you go into uh, Galatians 3.28, that goes into Hellenized, Hellen uh, Hellen 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 Hellenistes. Which is Hellenized. You had you had Hellenized Israelites that were cast out as Gentiles. So when you go into that word world again, it goes into government, which is talking about the Israelites. Now we're gonna get a precept to back up what I'm saying. John 3:16. For it says, "For God so loved the world." I'm reading for verbatim. So God loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is pertaining to the Israelites. All right. Let's prove that. Let's prove that this is pertaining to the Israelites. This is Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. Now, this was the prophecy that was given to um, the mother of Yahweh Shai, which her name is Miriam, which is Mary. All right. And this is what she was told. This is Matthew 1 and 21. And she, meaning Miriam, the mother of Yahweh Shai, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai. Now it says Jesus here, but you got to go into the Paleo Hebrew and get the understanding of the true name of the only begotten Son and the Heavenly Father. The letter J is only 500 years old, 
The Messiah is over 2,000 years old. So his name ain't Jesus. That letter J is only 500 years old. All right. You got to go into the Paleo Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew, to get the true name of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten son. Because Jesus is not the name of the, of the only begotten son. All right. It says, call his name Yahushai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, wouldn't that say everybody in that scripture? It doesn't say everybody. It says his people. And that his is speaking plural. Just for example, if you have a phone or a particular individual has a phone, you'll point and say, you see you see that phone he got? You know, I like his iPhone. I like his, you know, such and such. I like his car. I like his TV. I like his house. See, his is speaking plural. So it's giving you a, a particular uh, distinction, all right, letting you know who the Messiah truly died for. So it says his there. So it's, it's pertaining to a, a particular people, which is talking about the Israelites that are scattered abroad. So we read Matthew 1 21. It says, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai. Yah means he, Yahweh Shai means savior or deliverer. That's the true name of the only begotten son. It says, for he shall save his people. All right. From their sins. And that's talking about the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native American Indians have scattered abroad. So that cuts all of that. So when you go into Matthew 1 21, it tells you he 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 shall save his people from their sins. So the so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native American Indians, those are the true Hebrew Israelites, according to the Bible. And the Lord, Yahweh Shai, he died for us so we can be able to get grafted back to the father because our forefathers Broke the old covenant. They didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. So the Lord discontinued us from our heritage, according to Jeremiah 17 and 4. All right? And this is Acts 5, and we're going to start at 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey Yahweh rather than men. It says, It says, The power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hung on a tree. Verse 31. Him have Yahweh exalted with his right hand. To be a prince and a savior for to give repentance, repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. See, so repentance is for the Israelites. Repentance is only for the Israelites. It's not for all people. It's only for the Israelites. And and we're the only ones that's going to be saved. All right. The elect of the nation of Israel, which we're hoping to be, is going to be saved. Not everybody's going to be saved. All right. Salvation is not for everybody as well. Salvation is. It's only for the Israelites. It says, Him have the Most High exalted with His right hand to be a prince and a savior for, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So repentance is only for the Israelites. It's not for all people. All right? Only for the Israelites. Read again. Acts 5 and 31. And this is in the New Testament. Him have the Most High exalted with His right hand to be a prince and a savior for, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So when you go to John 3.16... Now you understand who the Messiah died for. John 3.16. For the for Yahweh, Bashimah, for Yahweh. So it says, For Yahweh so loved the world, Salakia. And I'll read it for Babita. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we know that word world there goes into the Greek word of cosmos. Alright? Which is talking about government, which is pertaining to the Israelites. All right. So the Messiah. Now, when we read in that word world, it went into Gentiles as also Jews. But the, the Gentiles that's in that um, description is talking about Israelites who were Hellenized. All right. You had Israelites that were in the ways of the Greeks. They're in the ways of the heathen. They was cast out as heathens. All right. And I can prove that as well. This is um, uh, Acts 6 and 1. It says, in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose murmuring of Grecians against the Hebrews. It says, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Now, will you go into the meaning of that word Grecian there? All right. And this also goes with uh, Galatians 3.28. Because that word neither Jew nor Greek, that Greek goes into Hellenin. But when you go into Acts 6 and 1, it goes into Grecian, which is talking about Hellenized Israelites. All right. Israelites of the flesh that were Hellenized. They were dressed Greek, speaking Greek. They were in the ways of the Greeks. They were cast out 
as heathens. They were cast out as Gentiles, but they were Israelites of the flesh. They were Israelites, but they had a Hellenized mindset. They had a Gentile state of mind, just like today. Our people have a, Hellen a Hellenistic mindset. They're in the ways of the heathen. They're not in the ways of the Lord. All right? Strong's G, 1675. Hellenistes. Hellenistes. So this is, the, this is the Greek word for the meaning of that word Grecian, which is G, 1675. Hellenistes, which is Hellenists. All right? Hellenized. Hellenist. It says a Hellenist. One who imitates the manner and customs of the worship of the Greeks and use the Greek tongue. And who is this pertaining to? Let's find out. B. Used in the New Testament of Jews, which are Israelites, born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. So you had Israelites that were in the ways of the Greeks. They were cast out as Gentiles. So when Apostle Paul, he went to the, uh, he wrote those epistles, those foreign letters. You know those those uh, letters? He wrote them to the Israelite foreigners, man. When he wrote those epistles, he went to the foreigner Israelites. All right? And that's who he was writing them to. Because Apostle Paul, he was an Israelite. All right? Yeah, he was a Roman, which is a Roman citizen. He was an Israelite, though. He was a Roman citizen. All right? But he was an Israelite. And he wrote those letters to the foreigner Israelites. All right? And he could speak many different languages. All right? Apostle Paul, he could speak many different languages, all right? And he was a Pharisee, but he went away from that and became an apostle himself. He learned under the apostles and became an apostle himself, all right? So Apostle Paul, when he wrote those letters, those are to foreigner Israelites in those regions, all right? It says, used in the New Testament of Jews born in foreign lands and speaking Greek. So there you go. You had Israelites of the flesh that were speaking different languages. That's why when you go into the meaning of uh, when you read the scriptures and it says that they received the, the Holy Spirit and they spoke in utterance. That was talking about speaking different languages. All right. Being able to speak different languages. You got brothers right now that's teaching this truth. They speak Spanish. They speak Japanese. They speak Chinese. You know, they speak Portuguese. They speak, you know, many different languages. Dutch. You can think any language. They speak those. That's the utterance. All right, because you can't speak something that somebody can't understand. That don't make no sense. You're going to go to a Chinese person, or I mean, no, not Chinese person, but if you went to China, let's say, and you was a, a, a if you was an American, so-called American, and you went to China, you can't go over there, so I'm talking about to a regular Chinese person that speaks fluent Chinese, and just start talking English to them. They're not going to understand. Or if you go up to them and just say, bashi, ba, 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 to a Japanese, Chinese person, they're not going to understand what you're saying. You got to be able to what? Speak the same language so they can get an understanding of what you're saying. A translation. You have to have a translator or somebody to be able to translate. You know, just publicly paraphrasing, you know. But if you go to these foreign countries, you have to speak the same language as them. All right, you may have some that can speak English, but a lot of these foreigners can't speak the same language as you. So how are you going to be able to speak a language to, to get to be able to communicate with them? You have to speak that language for them to be able to receive what you're talking about. All right. That's that utterance, speaking different languages, all right? Not gibberish. And you can look up what gibberish is, man, all right? So, again, when it talks about those Gentiles, it's talking about Israelite foreigners, right here. It says, Strong's definition, Hellenist, Hellenistes, from the derivative, a Hellenist, or Greek-speaking Jew, an Israelite, which is Grecian. So when you go to John 3.16 and you look at that Gentile there and it says also Jews, it was talking about Israelites. The, the Gentiles were the Israelites of the flesh. They were not in their heritage. They were speaking Greek, dressing Greek. They were in the ways of the Greeks. They were cast out as Gentiles. All right. So that's what that Greek, that's what that Gentile is talking about in there, in that, in that John 3.16. And we're going to go there again. All right. That John 3.16, when you go into the meaning of that word cosmos, it's meaning government. But notice when I went down and I went into uh, that word world, because you got some people that'll see that and say, look, it says Gentile right there. It does say Gentile right here. But you got to understand there's two types of Gentiles. You had Israelite foreigners and you had natural Gentiles. That's not an Israelite. So you have two types of Gentiles. See, it says the Gentiles as constructed to the Jews. And these Gentiles that it's talking about is Israelite foreigners that were cast out as Gentiles because they had a Hellenistic mindset. They were Hellenized. So that's what that Gentile is talking about. And we can prove that too as well. Go to uh, Matthew 10, 
Because Yahweh Shai told his 12 apostles not to go to the Gentiles, which are talking about the natural heathens. All right. The ones that are not Israelite descent. Yahweh Shai said, don't go to the don't go to the Gentiles. Matthew 10 and 5. It says these 12 Yahweh Shai sent forth and commanded them saying, go not to the way of the Gentiles. If this was talking about actual heathens and John 3, 16, why would Yahweh Shai tell his apostles not to go to them? He would have said, go to them and go to the Israelites. He didn't say that. He said, go not into the way of the Gentiles. This, the, this Gentiles and, the, and this precept is talking about heathen nations. That's not Israelite descent. It says, go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans into you, into you not. So he told them not to go to the natural Gentiles. Don't go to the natural Gentiles, but go where? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the Israelites. Because you had Israelites that were scattered abroad. All right. They were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. So when you read certain scriptures, it, it could be talking about Israelites or it could be talking about Gen it could be talking about natural Gentiles. That's why you got to really understand what you're reading. And Matthew 10 and 5 is talking about heathen, heathen nations. All right. This Gentiles and this Gentile and this precept is talking about uh, heathens that are not Israelite descent. All right. He said, go not to the Gentiles. But he said, go rather to the lost sheep and house of Israel, because the, the Israelites were scattered abroad amongst these 17 heathen nations. Just like today, our people are scattered abroad amongst these 17 heathen nations. You got Israelites that look like heathens, but they Israelites do going back to their father's seed line. All right. It says, and as ye go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So there you go. All right. So when you read John 3, 16, that's talking about the Israelites. All right. That's talking about the Israelites. That's not talking about heathens. All right. That's not talking about natural Gentiles. That's talking about Israelite foreigners and Israelites because you had you had two types of Gentiles. You had Israelite foreigners and you had and you had natural heathens. That's not of the sea line of Jacob. You had the 17 heathen nations. And that's not talking about the 17 heathen nations being saved. That's talking about Israelite foreigners. When you read John 3, 16. All right. And I got one more precept. This is Matthew 15 and 24 Matthew 15 and 24 and this is what Yahweh Shai said unto that woman and it says but he answered and said I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel that's who the Messiah was sent for the Israelites he was not sent for every single person of the world he was sent only to the Israelites so called Negroes Hispanics and Native American Indians so that cuts everything man let's read John 3 16 again so when you read John 3 16 all you got to do is go into the meaning of that word world there. And that word world, it goes into cosmos, which is talking about government, the government of Israel. So the Lord sent his only begotten son for the Israelites. Yahweh Shai died for the Israelites so we could get grafted back to the Father and have grace. All right? Because we broke the old covenant. We didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments. And grace is not eternal. All right? It's just temporary until the second coming. Yahweh Shai was that sacrificial lamb for us to be able to get grafted back to the Father. This is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have but have everlasting life. So this precept is talking about the Israelites. All right. It's not talking about everybody. This is talking about Israelites. All right. So, hey, Lord, one is that is that a fine? I want to give honors and glories and praise to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahashai, Bahashim, Yahweh, Kakodash, and double honors to the elders and apostles of the great millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to the old full elect. And salutations to the hopeful elect. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. <laughs> and yeah, you see there brothers out there scattered abroad. I am your brother, Mashiach Arazaka, from the Servants of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada Branch. And Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Salah, get to next time I say, Shalom.